Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we're taking a spiritual perspective on the sociopath slash psychopath. So this particular message, we are going to delve into the spiritual side of things when it comes to the sociopath and psychopath. If you haven't listened to the audio about sociopathic relatives, you might want to take a listen. That way you have some perspective as to the fleshly human part of who these people are. But when you look at the spiritual perspective of a psychological term, any type of personality disorder, you will find that God admonishes and God also destroys individuals that participate in ungodly behavior, some sooner rather than later. Those of you all who have listened to the message dealing with the sociopathic relatives, you know that those that I've mentioned, unfortunately, passed away. Okay, their behaviors, their attitudes, the things that they did over the years caught up with them. Okay, so this is something that is very serious. This is something that is going on with so many people, this sociopathic, psychopathic type of behavior. And for some of you all, you've got to distance yourself from these people who carry these titles in your life, yet exhibit these types of behaviors because what they will do over time is corrupt you, okay? If it wasn't for God, I most likely would have been very much like those people that I described in the audios dealing with narcissism, uh, sociopath, psychopath. Uh, those who are cold hearted, lack empathy, all of that, but God, hallelujah. And thank you to those of you all who continue to pray for me as well. Now let's get into the spiritual perspective of these sociopath, psychopathic type of individuals. We're going to use the Bible. Of course, that's what spiritual perspectives are all about. We want to get into the scriptures. If you look at the English standard version of the Bible, Mark seven twenty through 23, it makes it plain. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man come evil thoughts. Let's stop right there. Evil thoughts. There are things that these sociopathic, psychopathic types of individuals think about that if they were to tell you what their thoughts encompass, you would be shocked. Your mouth would drop open. Let's continue to read what else is in the heart of the man, right? And there's women, too, who, who have all sorts of issues. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, okay? All of these things come out of the hearts of these men and women. Okay. Now the Bible does not say sociopath and psychopath. But these character traits definitely describe the sociopath slash psychopath. Okay. We talked about the sociopathic relatives who are charming. We talked about the irresponsible ones. The impulsive ones. Those that have the criminal mindset. Those that feed off of others and who are manipulators, okay? All of these sorts of individuals that have appeared in the scriptures, okay? Nothing good come of their behaviors. And I know some people, they hurt behind a lot of what their relatives have done. They hurt behind what spouses and exes and so forth have done to the family, okay? Okay. And God doesn't take this sort of thing lightly. You see, don't act as if, oh, well, God, he doesn't care. Because see, sociopathic, psychopathic people want you to believe that God doesn't care and that they will never reap what they have sown. But I'm telling you from personal experience, they do. The family was much more at peace since the death of some of those individuals. I kid you not. Because there is no issues swirling like they were when they were walking on this planet. 
You see, and I'm not talking about just one person. I'm talking about many people who were buried six feet deep and those that were left behind. Finally, finally, we got our peace. OK, as quiet as it's kept. Some folks had even rejoice. I don't have to deal with all of the dramas and the traumas anymore. Thank you, Jesus. You see, not everybody cried at some of these funerals. Some people just stared and then walked away in peace. Romans 1, 28 through 32. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, psychopaths, sociopaths, it's just lip service. God, Jesus, some of them don't even mention anything spiritual. They did not see fit to acknowledge God. This is what the Bible says. God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. This explains why they do wicked things. Why they act so confused and weird and strange. God gave them up. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. This describes some of the people that you grew up with. This describes those that God separated you from. This describes the deceased. Why, oh, why, God, did you not answer my prayers concerning my relative, concerning my spouse? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. God said, I gave them an opportunity. They could have done what was right. They chose not to. They didn't see it fit to acknowledge me. I'm a righteous God. I can't just let people just continue to do anything and everything. At some point, they're going to have to reap. Yes, for a time, they got away with a whole lot. People laughed. Oh, I remember some of them stories. I was a little kid listening to some of what my uncles were telling my grandmother. And there were their great uncles around or there would be other family members and they laugh. They laugh about some of the evil stuff. And I thought it was odd. I thought it was strange. These were not nice people. These were people who, yes, they appeared to be charming. But when you started pulling back the layers of who they really were, oh my goodness. These were just as the psychologists described. They were irresponsible. They were impulsive. They had criminal mindsets. They were manipulators. They were cold hearted. And these people were praised in some of the family circles. Praised for their evil ways. Very self-centered and immature. Going over to Romans 8, 5 and 8. These were sinful men, I'm telling you. And some of you all, you got to walk with the Lord so that you can be able to see the evil for what it is. Because when you're around a bunch of evil people who support evil, you don't see nothing wrong with it. And for a while there, I really didn't see what was wrong with people saying and doing what they were doing. I mean, if it was going to help them in some kind of way, oh well, you see, we justify wickedness at times or we are okay and all right so that we can fit in with certain family members okay but god hello he opens up our eyes to some things romans 8 5 and 8 for those who live according to the flesh what do they do they set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit they set their minds on the things of the spirit right when you decided to give your life over to Christ, when you decided that enough is enough, I'm not going to keep following after these fools. When you decided that you were going to walk the straight and narrow path, you started zeroing in on the things of the spiritual realm, right? Wisdom and patience and love and purity and holy living, you know, things that are righteous and true. Psychopaths and sociopaths, they don't do that. They don't do that. They will put on a facade. Bible says, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. See, when I decided that I was going to start walking this walk and taking God seriously, I focused in on life and peace, 
not death and war. You see, God was the one who said, I need for you to draw near to me. Now you can share information that I'm giving you, but not everybody's going to listen. And at the time, I didn't have any type of psychological term to describe some of those in my family. So psycho, psychopath and sociopath, I didn't know those words. All I knew was things like selfish, right? <laughs> some of you all, you know, people who's cold hearted, they lack empathy and remorse. They do bad things and they don't lose one wink of sleep. They're real disrespectful and foul toward other people, especially when you cross them. And once again, hey, they're going to justify their wickedness. But see, I didn't have any word to describe and I didn't have any scriptures either because I wasn't walking according to the spirit when I would see these things happening. You just kind of accept that uncle so-and-so is who he is. Aunt so-and-so is who she is. Uh, you hear through the grapevine, through your inter intermediate family of what these other people are about. And so you just go, oh, okay, it is what it is. You don't delve deeper. You don't think about some of what they're doing could rub off on you. But then God shows up in your life and he starts showing you the ugliness of who you are as a result of being around certain people, talking to certain people, doing their dirty deeds. Then you go, oh, oh wait a minute. This isn't righteous living. This isn't a good life. You start telling people what you've been up to or what you've witnessed. And they start telling you, ooh, that's foul. That's evil. No, that's not right. You see. And so if you are true to the cause, if you will, and that cause being I'm walking with the Lord and I want to see some people say sanctified and Holy Ghost feel you are going to start with you. You're going to start the inner work process with you in healing from the traumas and the dramas and whatever else that has taken place. You're going to get around the like minded and do what you're supposed to do according to the will of the Lord. You see, you're going to pray. You're going to fast. You're going to read your word. You're going to. Just fight up against those thoughts that keep showing up. You're going to you, to uh, appease the spirit and not the flesh. You tell yourself no a whole lot. <laughs> you see, and that's what I had to do. No, I'm not thinking this way. No, I'm not going over here. No, I'm not doing this. You see, you tell yourself no to a whole lot of things because you know it's not right. It's simply not right. Genesis 6, 5 through 13 says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see, this is what the Lord saw in the beginning of the Bible. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said what? He was going to blot him out. Right? Even to this day, we got family members who the Lord saw that they were constantly causing friction, constantly keeping up some drama. So, the war stopped when they passed away and peace showed up. If you didn't want to make wrongs right, psychopath, sociopath, relative, right? That's okay. The Lord said, I'm going to blot you. I'm, I'm going to take you out sooner rather than later. You see, some people had that opportunity to do what was right and they chose not to. So ashes to ashes, dust to dust. God is not the type of God that you want to mess with, right? You don't want to play with him. You don't want to say that you're going to do something and then don't do it. You don't want to say that you give all honor and praise to the one true God, but yet you out here doing some sociopathic, psychopathic type of things and you're thinking evil and it's all about you and you're immature and you're walking around with these shallow emotions. Lord Jesus, he may shine that ocean gaze. I'm talking to somebody. You see, some people like to play on two sides of the fence. I'll walk with the Lord when he suits me. Then I'm going to walk over here with Lucifer, AKA Satan, when he suits me. See, and you can't do that because sooner or later, one is going to cancel out the other. Satan's going to say, I got him. Or God's going to say, I got him. You see, Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, and Lord knows some of you parents, you know how this goes. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and though they discipline him, 
right? We're not talking about parents that don't discipline. They did discipline. And some of you all may have witnessed this sort of thing in your own families. Though they discipline him, will not listen to them. This stubborn, rebellious son don't want to listen, even though he's been disciplined. Then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders. See, they brought him over to the church. Some of you all, rather than sit up there and say, no, uh -uh, I, I don't want to bring him over to the church or I don't want to encourage my son or daughter who has a rebellious son or daughter to go to the church. Uh, uh Listen, this is what they did old school style. Bring him out to the elders of his city at the gates of the place where he lives, and they shall say to the elders of his city, This is our son. Uh oh. This, our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Now, this is what they did back in the day. Then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones. Now, you know, nowadays that sort of thing doesn't happen, but I tell you what, we can lay some hands on some folk. And pray the demons out. Uh oh, get him over to the synagogue. Get him over to the church. Get him over to that praying woman's house who has a history of casting out demons. God gave her the authority. Send him over to the man of God who can not only talk, but walk according to the will of the Lord and place his hands on him and rattle them demons up to the point where they just come out in Jesus' name. You see how serious God took this sort of thing? My son's a psychopath. My son's a sociopath. What have you? Your son's a glutton and a drunkard. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones. This is how they handle this sort of thing. So you shall purge the evil from your midst and all Israel shall hear and fear. No, we don't have the authority to be going around taking folk out, but God does. And I will tell you from personal experience that my grandmother, she went and she prayed to the Lord about many things concerning her children. And she got the peace that she needed. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But let me tell you, she got the peace that she needed. And some of you all, you know what you've been praying. And some of you all have been too scared to pray certain prayers. But I'm here to tell you right now in the name of Jesus, that if folks can't get their acts together, then you can go to the one true God and put that person's name in his hands. I've had enough. Lord Jesus, I'm not going to cry any longer. I'm not going to have any more intercessory prayer for this person. I'm not going to keep dragging them over to the elders to have them lay hands. I'm just going to ask that you let your will be done. And I know you may cry many tears, but God's will is so much more greater, so much more power, it, powerful. It gets more results than anything that we can think of. First Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Uh-oh, 9, 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Let me stop right there. Psychopaths, sociopaths, don't want to turn toward the one true God. Don't want to get counseling. Don't want to go see a doctor. Don't want to do too much of anything. Just want to keep stirring up evil. Keep stirring up evil. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Stop telling some of you believers. I know well wishers, what have you stop telling them that they're going to heaven. They had a little moment where they broke down. They cried. They went back to doing their little evil ways again. Then they come back. Oh, please, you know, pray for me. Then they go back to being evil again. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? There is no place. Stop telling them that there is a place for them. When they have not given over their lives to the one true God, there is no evidence and proof of this sort of thing. They're just playing on two sides of the fence. They're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. When some of these relatives passed away, God, he spoke to my spirit and it shook me up. This is part of the reason, too, why I walk with the Lord and don't take him lightly. Some of those people did not inherit the kingdom of God. That shakes you up to know that some people that you used to sit down with, you used to break bread with, you used to talk on the phone to, that they didn't inherit the kingdom of God. It says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral was like that before they died, nor idolaters was like that before they died, 
nor adulterers was like that before they died, nor men who practice homosexual homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of us knew what they were before they left this earth. And then you got some relatives that run around and say, oh, no, he's OK. He's all right. He's with Jesus. No, he's not. His wife found out that he was cheating and creeping. The mistress showed up at the funeral. Some of them was messing around, doing all sorts of things at various parties. Matter of fact, some of them died soon after the party. Wasn't thinking about Jesus. Stop telling those lies. Some of them greedy. Who's greedy for money? Greedy for more opportunity. Greedy for more food. Just gluttons. Just always drinking and eating and everything. Wasn't thinking about God. The food was the God. The money was the God to them. The same sex relationship that they was in, that man or that woman was the God in their life. And you're going to sit up here and tell me that they inherited the kingdom of God? The devil always putting people up to telling lies, especially at funerals, Lord Jesus. And such were some of you. See, that's the thing. <laughs> the Lord reminds us, uh-huh, and you were like that. So don't get it all twisted. Don't get all high and mighty and sitting up there on your soapbox thinking you something special. And such were some of you. Were, though. That's key. You were. But then what happened? You decided, they may not have decided, but you decided that you were going to give your life to Christ. But you were washed. Hallelujah. Got baptized, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. You were sanctified. You were justified in who? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If it wasn't the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then no, you were not washed. You were not sanctified. And it's time to get right and be sanctified and justified and washed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. That is true. That is righteous. That is what you do as a believer. Anything outside of that, I'm sorry, but I cannot agree. And I'm not going to promote other gods, but that's God. You see, that's true. That's, that's the true walk in and of itself is I got saved. I got sanctified. I got washed up. I gave my life over to Christ. That's real. You see, but those people who died before us, some of them, uh, uh, ministers just want to make people feel good at times. Not all, but some at the funeral, but some of them even know. Uh-uh, no. something's wrong here. Something's wrong. This one didn't make it. But I'm not going to say that because the family's grieving. And that's not right. It's not proper. But you know, some of these young people, they sit back and they say, Mm-mm, no, I know my uncle, I know my aunt, my mother, my sister, my brother. Mm -mm. No, they didn't make it. They say, well, who are you to judge? How do you know? I just know. Ephesians 4, 24. And to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. If they weren't living that righteous life, that holy life, didn't confess sin before they checked out of here, didn't repent. You cannot convince people that they're okay and all right in there with the father. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek what? The psychopath, the sociopath has to seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Is that happening? Come on now. Think about it. Is that happening? Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden. Hit him with who? Come on now. Lord Jesus. We got some individuals who. They got these personality disorders. And they're so thick. That their lives are literally hidden. Not with Christ and God. Uh uh. They're hidden with Lucifer. When Christ who is your life appears. Then you also will appear with him in glory. So when Christ shows up. In your life, if that sociopath or psychopath has turned from his or her evil ways and Christ shows up, then he or she will appear with Christ in glory. It's real simple. Then if you read on Colossians 3 and 5 says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. 
That's how you got cleaned up. That's how they have to be cleaned up. They have to put to death, therefore, what is earthly in them. The sexual immorality again. Here we go. Impurity, the passion, the evil desire, the covetousness, the idolatry. They got to put all that away. Then on top of that, let's continue to read Colossians 3, 6. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. It's coming. Why is it that some of these wicked people are suffering like they are? The wrath of God. What goes around comes around, right? Some people like to say, well, the wrath of God is coming for some people who live like this. Verse 7, in these, you too once walked. Once again, reminding you of where you came from, right? Keeping you humble, (laughs) making sure that you're not prideful. In these, you too once walked where you were living in them. But now, verse 8, you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Number nine, okay, of Colossians three, do not lie to one another. Psychopaths and sociopaths always lie. I said this in the other audio. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. You don't have to lie about your life. When you know that you're doing the right thing, but the psychopath or sociopath who has many facades to his or her uh, personality, lifestyle, what have you, they do have to lie because they know that they're scheming on people. They're pretending to be something that they're really not. They've been around people who have done this sort of thing. So they reason that it's okay and all right to be this way with this one, that way with this one. And you know the rest because some of you all, you witness relatives doing this sort of thing. And all they do is keep up mess. Jesus, they just keep a mess. Now you see why some folks suffer like they do and why some people, I know it hurts you to hear them say, I'm glad so-and-so is where she is, or I'm glad uh, this one is no longer with us. Oh, you're so terrible for saying that. You don't know what I went through. You don't know the pain that I had to endure because of this person. You see? And that's when some folks just got to be quiet because your situation, your experience may not have been as bad as the person who is saying, thank you, Jesus. I can live my remaining days on this planet without the dramas and traumas and people stalking and fighting and threatening and showing up at my house and whatever else they were doing while they lived drunk. Jesus. And there was a lot of that that went on when I was a kid. I saw that a lot of drunkards. So we we got more than enough as far as a spiritual perspective on these sociopaths and psychopaths. No, the words aren't in the Bible. OK, and just because the words are not in the Bible doesn't mean that the Bible is invalid and it's not a good resource to go to because it is because we do see that there are those scriptures that God warns us about. Right. We amplified them today. He let us know. That you cannot live this sort of life. Those sociopaths and psychopaths around us cannot live this sort of life and say that they're going to be okay and all right with him because that's a lie straight from the pits of hell. Okay. Now, what do you do when you're around these types of people? Well, you definitely don't want to do what they do. So you've got to be able to back up from them. You've got to be the type of individual that says, no, I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, Co-sign on the foolishness. I'm going to uh, safeguard myself as well as safeguard my children and grandchildren. Things that you know that you can be easily offended by. That a sociopath or psychopath can throw up in your face. You want to safeguard those things. So that means you don't tell secrets. You don't share information with them that you know that you don't want to be twisted or to get back to certain people and all of that. You have to expose sociopaths and psychopaths. Soon as you see that they're playing some games, running some games on you, you got to say, look, I'm not the one. I see what you're doing. What? What? What am I doing? You know what you're doing. No, I need you to explain. I don't have to explain too much of anything. I know that you're doing something that's not right. And I'm not going to play into that. You see, that's just giving an example. You definitely, definitely don't want to be owing them anything. No favors, no money, nothing, nothing. So you make sure that you um, make good on your debts or whatever else that you owe them. But don't ask them for anything more. And if you never ask them, don't start. 
If this individual within your family is keeping up a lot of drama and trauma, they're harassing you, they're stalking you, they're threatening you or what have you. If you got to call the police on your own family members or friends, then you got to do that then. If you got to be the one that has to get big brother in the family to go over there and have a little conversation with somebody, then you do that. And if it gets to be way too much for you to handle because this person you're living with them or you got to care for them, then you need to get some outside help. Get some professionals to help that person because sometimes it's older people that act like this and I can't deal with it. You see, or it's uh, somebody that is um, in your household and you don't have the money yet to save up to get your own place. You've got to be able to uh, safeguard yourself from all of the, the, the issues they want to put upon you. So you might find yourself having to leave the house more frequently or move on the other side of the house if you got one of those large homes or you might have to, you know, borrow some money from somebody who's not a sociopath or psychopath to get away from them. You might have to once again call the police or consult with a lawyer or sit down with a spiritual counselor, but you're going to have to do something if this toxic behavior is uh getting the best of you. Okay? But these people are definitely among us. Now, there are some general uh, tips that are all over the Internet about how to deal with a psychopath or sociopath. You're welcome to take a look at uh, some of the information that's out there. But I will tell you that psychopaths, they are able to target folk and and be able to swindle them and, and basically get them under their thumbs because they see weakness. They see the yes man. They see the yes woman. Okay. They have been around some of these people long enough to know how to manipulate them. They create these bonds with these folks to get them to trust them. You may have been a victim, so you know what I'm talking about. And then once they get what they want, then they just abandon folk. They move on. Okay, this sort of thing even happens at the workplace. Folks know how to play on the weaknesses of others. You see. And for some of you all, it may be breaking news for you. All these years, my, my uncle, my aunt, they've been acting this way towards me. They've been, you know, doing some real foul things. And I thought that they really had a hardship, but they were really using me. Yeah, that's what they do. So all their charisma and their charm and they, you know, are considered the favorite sometimes in families. Once again, it's all game. You got to be able to attract a bee with honey, right? And a sociopath is very good at doing this sort of thing. The psychopath is good at doing it, okay? And you got to be the one that says, uh-uh, you won't get my honey, you see. And then when you do find that you've gotten played by a psychopath or sociopath, you forgive yourself because there's no sense in walking around here acting as if, Okay, it never happened. No, it did happen. So you see the truth for what it is, but you forgive yourself and you go to the Lord and you ask the Lord to help you to forgive yourself and you don't fall prey to him again. I remember a woman, she stood there, she was upset. She was crying about her boyfriend who once again managed to get some money out of her. She was so upset with herself. And I told her, I said, there's no sense in being upset with yourself. Next time, just guard your wallet. <laughs> you know, don't give them anything. If anything, you can remember the pain the next time he asks and you know you don't want to go through that pain anymore. You won't do it. You see, sometimes people are so hard on themselves. We make mistakes. We're not always on point. It's okay. It's all right. We learn from it and we try not to do it again. Sometimes it takes people what? In a violent relationship, it takes them seven times to get away from the abuser before they finally say, okay, they go back. And then they get away. They go back and they get away. They do that about seven times before they finally say, okay, I've had enough. You see, but you got away though. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. You got away. But you got to protect yourself around psychopaths and sociopaths. You got to password protect. You got to change uh, your address sometimes. Uh, you got to make sure that um, you're not talking to a mutual family member or friend. Um, that is cool with the psychopath or sociopath because they will carry information. 
Um, you just got to make sure that these sorts of people are not living in your household when they got a criminal background too. Uh, uh, they can throw you under the bus, but this is what we are around. Some of us, we went to the funeral some of us, we heard, um, about the death of some of these people. Okay. God wipes people out for these behaviors he does i know some people would like to see some folks wiped off the face of this earth sooner rather than later but don't be so anxious for that sort of thing if anything you just go to the lord and ask him to put some more love peace patience in your heart to forgive your enemies but you do these sorts of things at a distance so that you don't end up risking your safety or your freedom messing around with people like this well, there is your spiritual perspective as well as a recap of some information you may have already heard in another audio on sociopathic relatives. Blessings to you. Keep the faith.